when you discuss traditional forms of investing, equities, bonds, real estate, are all inversely correlated to a rise in rates. This is a challenging period to position yourself. I believe it's a time for individuals to recognize that return of your money is not as crucial right now as return on your money. Preserving purchasing power is truly, I think, what's very significant. We are witnessing a trend that's quite noteworthy. Actually, we are observing a drawdown of metal off the London Metals Exchange, the Cumex market being backdoored by the commercial banks out of the ETFs, at a level that I have never witnessed in 30 years, ever. It appears to me that the most well-funded, well-informed, successful traders on the planet are opting for assets, commodities, gold, and silver. And not only are they opting for it, you can observe they are eliminating counterparty risk and taking possession deliveries off of Cumex on a massive scale in the LME, off a massive scale that we never witnessed before, ever, where deliveries represented only a small fraction of volume on the Cumex market and the LME, and now it's extraordinary. So I believe that individuals need to comprehend, in fact, just to provide an idea of what I think the most significant money in the world is doing, I think it sheds a lot of light. So if you examine what's occurred on the Cumex market in one day, the ultra-wealthy individuals had taken possession of 41% of all the physical kilo bars on the Cumex market. Now, what's intriguing about that, the big banks typically don't deal in kilo bars. They deal in 100-ounce or 400-ounce bars. The kilo bars, to me, would be indicative of this group on COMEX that we've observed emerge called the Others. Now, there's a report that is published by the COMEX every week. It's called The Commitment of Traders. And for my entire career, it showed the positioning of the commercial banks versus the positioning of the hedge funds called the SPECs. And then out of nowhere over the last few years, we've seen the rise of this group called the Others, and they're believed to be sovereign wealth funds and family offices. They are the most sophisticated private investors in the world. Just to give you an idea of how significant this really is, 175,000, zero ounces of gold, has been withdrawn off the Cumex market in a very, very short period of time in these kilo bars. And to me, it signifies that the big money sees something wicked coming this way, because the big money is taking delivery and pulling it out. Silver is being bled down at a record pace. Who's taking all of this metal? Where is it going? Why is it being pulled off of the exchanges? And I guess I would submit to you that the biggest money in the world always is front-running. They're always ahead of the little guy. They're always positioning and using, in this case, the fraudulent price on Comex to achieve this. So you have an awakening. Not only is gold and silver a hedge against inflation, it has no counterparty risk is not simultaneously someone else's liability, but the removal of all the counterparty risk by pulling it off of these exchanges. You have the rest of the world, who's been massively accumulating it too, now calling for a new price-setting hub, and they want it in Moscow. They want to strip it away from the West, who has been creating a perception of reality that you don't need to buy precious metals. Just stay in traditional Western-based assets like stocks, bonds, real estate, and keep the engine going. But it's beginning to break. And you can see that by massive withdrawals off of these exchanges in a fashion that we've never seen before. So where do you put your money? Do you put it in fixed income, where you're guaranteed a negative real return? No. Do you put it in equities that are inversely correlated to a rise in rates? No. How about a bond market that it's the end of a November 30th, 2023 bull market? There's still negative real return. You aren't going into fixed income. And that's where people used to go, by the way. When times got tough, you would go from risk-on in stocks to risk-off in bonds. But at a negative real return, look, they say gold doesn't pay any interest, but it sure beats the heck out of a negative 5% or 6% return if you buy the numbers that we are being fed on inflation. So we are entering a period of time where traditional assets need to be looked at a little bit differently, where unconventional times call for unconventional decisions. I personally have been nearly 100% invested in metals for 20 years. Wasn't always the best decision, but I sleep like a baby every single night. And I think when this cycle finishes, when the dust settles, people are going to look at traditional assets very differently. And I think traditional assets right now are not the place to be. Now, 
There are a lot of people might disagree with me, but for me, I'm doing what I see the biggest money in the world doing, and what I've seen them do now for the past six years, and that is accumulate physical precious metals and remove any and all counterparty. When you take a look at inflation as a whole as a problem, we have to make the assumption or the understanding that the inflation numbers that we are being fed are arguably false. It's in the vested interest of the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the powers that be to show us numbers that understate inflation considerably. And you can take a look at the National Bureau of Economic Research, who came out with, they're a Washington-based think tank, and they came out with a report in July when inflation measured by the CPI was 9%. And they said, look, if we took the 13.6% inflation of June of 1980s and applied the same metrics that are being applied today, that number would actually be 9%. Basically, what they're saying is that our inflation, any way you look at, is at least 50% greater, if not much more. And I guess where I think the rubber meets the road is in the realization that going all the way back to Roman times, when they would cut the edges of the coins to make less and less and less silver inside of the coins that were being paid to the soldiers or whomever else, from that point forward all the way to where we are today, it's been clear that politicians have chosen inflation over austerity every single time. It's in their vested interest not only to understate inflation, but to create inflation. Now, we're being told that 2% inflation is the target, and that is good. Why is that good? I would think that negative 2% would be better than 2%, in that the lower the inflation, the higher the standard of living. And I think that's something that we all have to come to understand is that we are in an inflationary cycle where I believe the Federal Reserve does not have the resolve to get tough on inflation. If we look at that statement by the National Bureau of Economic Research, when we had that 13.6% inflation in 1980s, and it rose a little bit from there, the then-Fed chairman, Paul Volcker, raised the federal funds rate to 19 and three quarters percent. That's getting tough on inflation. The real problem is that we have a balance sheet that has exploded on the Fed side to $9 trillion, all of it in interest rate-sensitive investments that have suppressed interest rates and created an environment where you have distortions in asset prices, substantially distorted. And so I guess my premise is that the Federal Reserve has no intention of getting tough on inflation, and if it's up to them, it will be death by hyperinflation before it's death by depression. Because as rates rise as the antidote to higher inflation, the inversely correlated effects of stocks, bonds, and real estate inversely correlated. Those rise in rates will be a spiritual religious experience for people in this country. And I think they don't want that to happen. Just the inverse correlation in all of these markets to rising rates is enough to make, I believe, the Fed punt on getting tough on inflation. I think that inflation is something that is really the biggest problem here domestically. Because the only way to fix it is to raise rates. And the act of raising rates is something that will blow things up in this economy to a level that most people have no understanding for and are not prepared for.